Konnichiwa everyone! If you're new here, hello and welcome! Every time we finish a travel series, we always upload a recap and cost video for you guys so that you can have kind of like a ballpark figure of how much you spend if you take the same trip or something similar to the one that we did. In this video, I will be showing you a summary of the whole trip and also the cost of everything from the food to our transportation to tickets and etc. So yeah, without further ado, my name is Hannah and this is What You Hannah Do, Summer Train Travel Series 2022, Recap and Cost. Woo! <laughs> what you Hannah do, what you Hannah do when they come for you. <sighs> on day one, we went from Tokyo to Gifu. Like on our other travels on this channel, we decided to use only local trains for the entire trip, except on the last day where we took a plane going back to Tokyo. Why local trains, you ask? Shinkansen or bullet trains can get super expensive, so we wanted to show you that this kind of trip can be done and can be fun as well. For this trip, we use the Seishunju Hachikipu, or Youthful 18 tickets like our first travel series. I talk about these tickets more on episode 1 of that series, so if you want to learn more about it, you can watch that video, and I will also put a link down below to the official website. Since we use these tickets for the entire trip, I will just be adding the cost of it on the final day. Anyway, to get to Gifu from Tokyo, we had to pass by Shizuoka. On our first train travel series, we'd already been to some parts of Shizuoka, so we wanted to go somewhere we had not yet been to. We decided to check out Yume Terrace, a really cool place where you can see Mount Fuji and the coastline on a good day, but this day was not the best day for a view. It was raining on and off, but thankfully when we wanted to be out and about, the rain would stop. We had some yummy kakigori in the cafe at the terrace and then headed to Konozan Toshogu via a ropeway right beside Yume Terrace. The round trip tickets plus the tickets to the shrine cost us 1,750 each and it was worth it. We just learned about the shrine the day of our trip and it was really cool. Beautiful architecture and stellar details. After going around the shrine and checking out where Ieyasu Tokugawa was first buried, we made our way back to the terrace and took a bus to Shizuoka Station. From there, we continued to make our way to Gifu while having some snacks from Shizuoka, but passing by Nagoya first to have our real first meal for the day. We went to Misen, a popular Taiwanese food restaurant in Nagoya and had Taiwanese ramen, gyoza, and fried rice. There are two of us eating during every big meal, so the price that you see on the screen will always be for two. After having our craving satisfied, we headed to Gifu. It's one of the prefectures I've been wanting to go to, so I was super excited. After checking in our hotel and freshening up, we took a bus to somewhere near Gifu Castle, our last spot for the day. We took another ropeway this day and climbed up quite a bit to get close to Gifu Castle. We thought we weren't going to be able to go inside the castle, but they were having a nighttime event that day, so we were fortunate enough to get to go inside the castle and see a museum and a 360 degree night view of Gifu City. It was a long way to Gifu, but we made it. Japanese trains are truly something else because we touched five different prefectures that day. Super cool. So on our first day, we spent 22,498 yen for the both of us, or 11,249 yen per person. Day 2. We left Gifu pretty early to head to Hikone and Shiga Prefecture. We had to visit the popular Hikone Castle, and boy was it gorgeous. We decided to visit the castle and the gardens only, and those tickets cost us 800 yen each. The castle itself was pretty small, but it was super cool and interesting to be able to go inside and feel a fraction of what it felt like being there during those times. After walking around the castle grounds and inside the castle, lots of climbing in this place by the way, we went to the areas around the castle grounds and stumbled upon an area that gave me major Kurashiki vibes. We wanted to get some dessert, but ended up eating early lunch because we saw Omiya, a popular roast beef restaurant. We had to give it a try. This was the best roast beef bowl I've ever had in my life. I had the roast beef bowl and he had the gyudon. Both extremely delicious. We did say we wanted to get some dessert, so after having that yummy omi beef, we went to a cafe to get some cake and have some drinks. It was pretty great too. Feeling refreshed, 
we left Hikone and headed for Tsuruga City in Fukui. We wanted to see a bit of the city to absorb it, but it wasn't going to be easy to go around, so we decided to rent some motorized bikes. We left our things in a locker, which was 300 yen, and got our bikes. It was my first time trying out a motorized bike, and it was so much fun! It was so much easier to move around with our bikes. We got to see a bit of the port, which I loved because it was a sea and the mountains together. We also stopped to see the Tsuruga red brick warehouses, met Dr. Raptor, and continued our way around the city. Unfortunately, it started raining again, so we had to go back to the station and cut our biking adventure short. We then headed to Fukui City in Fukui Prefecture. I lost my cool at the station because of the sheer amount of dinosaur anything. Amazing! The child in me was extremely happy. After checking in our hotel in Fukui and resting a little bit, we went to Echizen Tsuruki Soba to have some soba, of course. We ordered a meal that had an assortment of soba dishes and I devoured everything. The meals cost us 3,364 yen. Not bad for the amount of soba, right? So for day two, we spent 25,048 yen for two or 12,524 yen per person. The hotel was a bit pricey this day. Now day three. Day three was dinosaur day for us. Well, mostly me. <laughs> we got up bright and early to head to the Fukui Prefectural Dinosaur Museum. Since the transportation that we needed to use to get to the Dino Museum wasn't a part of the station Juachikipu, we had to get passes that included the train and the bus and the museum fee. The pass was 2,130 yen each. We left our bags at a locker again and went on our way. Guys, this Dino Museum was crazy awesome. The attractions were stunning and the museum catered to both kids and adults. I had so much fun and I learned so much more about dinosaurs. Who knew Japan had a prefecture that had a massive excavation site that the whole city was put under UNESCO? Amazing! After the Dino Museum, we went back to Fukui Station and found out that some of the trains were delayed, so we had some time to kill. And of course, we chose to spend that time eating. So we got some yaki saba sushi, or grilled mackerel sushi, which is quite a famous delicacy in Fukui to eat. It was super tasty! I enjoyed every single bite. We were able to get to Kanazawa Station after an hour and a half and checked in our hotel. There was a lot to see in Kanazawa, so we chose to stay at the same hotel for two nights. Since we'd been using a lot of hotels throughout our travels, we were able to get a discount on this one. Anyway, it was raining, so we decided to wait out the rain while eating more snacks. <laughs> I had some dried fish, dino bones, and dino eggs. When the rain subsided, we headed for the 21st Century Museum of Contemporary Art. We got in pretty late, so a lot of the attractions had already either closed or had already been booked out for the day. Going inside the museum was free though, and I still got to see some of the really cool art installations inside and outside. After that, what was left to do for that day? Eat dinner, of course! We went to Turban Curry to get some Japanese soul food. Kanazawa is known for its curry, so we went to one of their oldest restaurants. This curry was something else. It was like a warm blanket on a cold night. It was heartwarming and super nostalgic. Creamy, flavorful, delicious. So for day three, we spent 20,361 yen for the both of us, or 10,180 and 50 yen each. Not bad. Now on to day four. Unlike other days, we actually stayed put in one prefecture this day. We really wanted to see a lot of things in Kanazawa City, so we decided to spend the whole day here. Early in the morning, we went to Omicho Market. If you're looking for some awesome street food, this is the place to be. We ate squid, scallops, blowfish, nodogoro sushi, which is a specialty in Kanazawa, red ginger fish cake, and shiso fish cake. It was a delicious way to start our morning. After having our fill at Omicho Market, we decided to rent some bikes for the day. We went to Higashichaya District to try some gold leaf snacks since Kanazawa is known for its gold leaf. I tried Amazake shaved ice, green tea Amazake, and of course, some gold leaf ice cream. It was... interesting. Luxury in an ice cream. Since we had to burn all of that food that we just ate, 
We took our bikes and cycled through the city and up a mountain to see a nice view. I definitely burned a lot of calories that day. It was pretty hard work. Another famous Kanazawa must go to place is Kenrokuen, one of the best gardens in Japan. And wow, going through this garden, I understood why it's one of the three great gardens of Japan. It was stunning. The tickets to this garden are usually 320 yen, but for I don't know what reason, it was free that day that we went. I highly recommend it. 12 out of 10. After drooling over the garden, we got on our bikes again and biked to more spots in the city like Ishiura Shrine, the oldest Shinto shrine in Kanazawa, and the Nagamachi Samurai District, which was pretty cool. And then just like that, it was time for early dinner. <laughs> We went back to our hotel and then got on a bus to get to the other side of the city to go to Uogashi Shokudo, a restaurant in a fish market. He got the Ichibe Sashimi Don and I got the Sakana Don with mixed fried seafood. Both meals cost us a total of 2,850 yen and it was delectable. 10 out of 10. After our meal, we went back to the station and saw some daifuku for sale, so I got six. six. I'm always craving for something sweet after a savory meal. This day was amazing. Easily my favorite day of the trip. So for day 4, we spent a total of 10,890 yen for 2, or 5,445 yen per person. Lovely. Now day 5. We left Kanazawa pretty early again to say goodbye to Ishikawa Prefecture to go to Himi in Toyama Prefecture. We had to go to Takauka first to change trains, and the train line we used to get there wasn't a part of the station Juachikipu, so we had to pay 840 yen each to get to Takauka first, and then use the youthful 18 tickets from Takauka to Himi. At Himi, we passed through Manga Road to see some of Fujiko A. Fujio's characters. They were scattered all over Manga Road, which was really cute. After going around in the rain, we made our way to the seafood market to eat at Himi Gyoko Uichiba Shokudo to get some yellowtail, the fish that Himi is known for. I ordered the Himi Kaisen Zukidon, which was so good, and he ordered the Himi Hamadon, which was equally as yummy. We also ordered the Surimi Age fish cake balls, and that too was incredible. The one hour wait and the travel to Himi was absolutely worth it. We had to rush to the station to make our train, so we had to take a taxi to not miss it. We made our way back to Takauka and then headed for Toyama. When we got to Toyama, we found out that the museum I wanted to go to would be closed the next day, so we had to again rush to get there. We took another taxi to the museum and we were glad to have made it in time. The Toyama Glass Art Museum was magnificent and I highly recommend it. The tickets to the permanent and special exhibits were 1,200 yen each. After the museum, we walked back to our hotel to check in. We were so tired after five days of traveling that we decided to just end the day early and rest in the hotel. So for day five, we spent 20,760 yen for the both of us, or 10,380 yen per person. Day six, our last day. Since we weren't able to eat dinner the previous day because we were just so tired, the first thing we had to do this day was to get some breakfast. Toyama is known for its black ramen, so that's what we had. I just had the ramen, and he had the ramen with a bowl of rice and a raw egg. That ramen bowl woke me up and gave me a lot of energy. We still had some time before needing to go to the airport that day, so we decided to go to a really pretty Starbucks at Kansui Park. Since we had some really salty ramen, we decided to get some sweet drinks and dessert. After having a nice relaxing time at Starbucks, we went on a little cruise along the canal. We went through a water elevator, so that was quite cool. The tickets for the cruise and the tram to the station cost 1,400 yen each. When we got back to the station, we just looked around for a little bit and then took a bus to the airport. We got there a bit early, so we just looked around. There really wasn't much, but we were able to see a bit of the Japanese Northern Alps from the airport, which was lovely. As for our flight back to Tokyo, we used our miles, so it was free. Yay! So for our last day, we spent 8,285 yen for the both of us, or 4,142.50 yen per person. 
So that was our entire trip. We got to see and do so much on this trip and we loved every single part of it. The Fukui Prefectural Dinosaur Museum and our day in Kanazawa were definitely the highlights of our trip for me. And as for the food, it was the roast beef bowl in Hikone and the Himikai Senzukidon in Himi that I absolutely devoured, <clears throat> adored. I was also so happy to be able to show you guys some of the lesser known prefectures in Japan. So for this entire trip, including the Seishun Juachikipu, we spent a total of 131,942 yen for the both of us, or 65,971 yen each. So yeah, that's it. If you haven't watched the videos, I hope that this video will make you want to watch it. And if you have watched the videos, thank you so, so much. I really, really appreciate it. And yeah, thank you so much for watching this video. If you like this video, click like down below. And if you want to see more content about Japan, you know what to do. So until next time, Janet, and see you in the next video. Woo!